Hey guys, Kyle Cordiana here. Listen, I just finished up with the second stop of the Bassmaster Open Southern Series right here on Cherokee Lake near Morristown, Tennessee. Uh, had a really good event here, had a fantastic practice, fell right into a pattern that I wanted to do, execute in the tournament, and just expanded on that. And I just want to share with you guys what I learned about the lake, what I targeted, uh, the tools and the rods and the accessories and base and everything that I use to have a successful event in here. We weighed uh, 32 pounds and nine ounces for two days. Uh, and we finished in 11th place out of 225 voters. Uh, so a really solid finish. Definitely had the right pattern, the right fish, the right area to win this event. Um, lost one on day two. Um, didn't fish clean on day one, but definitely were around him to win it. But anyway, I just share you guys uh, what we did. And uh, so let's just get right into it. So I kept it really simple. Uh, if you guys don't know me, I love throwing uh, swim baits. Uh, not the great big ones, not the one size of your shoe, but I love throwing smaller swim baits. And I've been working with Kistler rods on a couple different prototype rods uh, that I'd like to get behind. One was a jerkbait rod, and the other one is another forward-facing uh, sonar, like uh, the Lorenz Active Target that I used in this event. Uh, and I use all the time, and I love it. Um, but it's throwing small swim baits. Uh, I think it's an easy way to make a long cast, get the bait down to a depth, get it in front of the fish, present it however you want to present it, and see how that fish will react. So once I knew they'd bite that, I didn't throw a whole lot of other bait. I did have some success throwing a Jean LaRue Biffle Bug on 45 degree pea gravel banks, uh, trying to target a bigger largemouth. I caught one of those doing that and a few other fish in practice. So let's just get right into it. Uh, I pretty much kept it simple. Uh, I had all these swim baits tied on. I wasn't finesse fishing with them. Um, I was definitely throwing 15 pound and 17 pound fluorocarbon. I was boat flipping these fish um, on day two. If you haven't seen that video, I boat flip a four and a half pound smallie. Um, I didn't want to mess around. There's no nets in the Bassmaster Opens. Game changer giant, bro. Game changer. Just get them in a boat, baby. So 15, 17 pound fluorocarbon, uh, I used Seaguar and Vizex. And I had, uh, for the most part, I was using a 3 8 size head. Um, I did have a half ounce head. I had a uh, quarter ounce head going. I had different size swim baits all the way as small as two and a half inches. And I had all the way up to four and three quarter inch swim baits. Um, so different sizes, different colors. Seems like that mid range was the best. Uh, but they definitely keyed in on the smaller ones, the bigger ones. Each day I caught some key fish on the bigger baits. So again, guys, I'm Kiss the Rod, Kiss the Reel through and through. Uh, these new reels by Kiss the Series 1 reels, I use them. That's it. That's all I use, and I love them. Uh, they perform so great. Um, and then when I wanted to go to a smaller bait, um, I went down to this Yum Pulse. This is a little uh, three and a half inch style bait. Again, I had this paired on a couple different sizes head. That's a three eighths or a quarter ounce head. Uh, sometimes those bay, they were keyed in on little owl wives, um, but they also had some thread fin shad. So uh, they were coughing up thread fin shad that were, you know, four or five inches long, almost as long as my hand and my live well, but also some little owl wives. And so they were keyed in on tiny bait, but also some big bait. The thing that was going on is there's a shad spawn going on. I don't know if a lot of guys figured this out, but there was one million percent of shad spawn going on on rocks. And it seemed to be keyed in around deeper water, um, which had me keying in on some bluff areas, uh, channel swings, things like that. You could literally use your Lance Active Target, look over there on the wall, and early in the morning and the evenings especially, just like a shad spawn would be, you could see the wall was just lit up with bait going up and down it. And you could literally watch smallmouth shoot through them and eat them and, and just kind of curl back around and go hide in the rocks. Um, so... That keyed me in real quick that there was something special going on and it's not your typical shad spawn where you see them flip them on the bank and all that. So unless you were using forward facing sonar technology, you had no idea that shad spawn was happening. So that Lowrance Active Target, game changer for me. It's the whole reason I figured out this pattern uh, and I was catching them. I mean, I, I was catching lots and lots and lots of fish and having a great day. My thumb is so sore uh, from all the fish. And then my other finger, if you can see all that, that's from, they're choking it so deep, that's from sticking my finger in their mouth to get it out on the teeth on the top. So, caught a ton of fish, had a blast doing it, Lawrence Active Target all the way. Now these rods I'm telling you about, this new forward facing sonar kind of prototype stuff I'm talking about. Um, I like having a rod, 7.3, 7.4. I want like a three power rod, like a light, medium, heavy, something with a pretty good uh, fast or moderate tip, uh, something like that. 
but I want it to be soft enough. I like to use a light wire hook. I don't like those heavy wire hooks for this uh, technique, so I don't want the rod to bend the hook. I just want it to kind of stick them good and hang on to them and, and uh, not straighten out the hook, but let the fish fight a little bit, but still had enough strength in the rod to boat flip four and a half pounder. So it was a perfect combo. So that's something I'm working on with Trey. And uh, also I had a seven, six medium heavy. This was on the 17 pound line, a little bit heavier, but I want a long rod because I'm bombing it out there. I'm seeing those fish 80 foot out there in front of me on the Lawrence active target. I want to be able to bomb it beyond them and bring it to them. Um, I caught a lot of fish that were out in a hundred foot of water suspended around bait balls. You could just see them roaming around up there. And if you could find them the active target and they were less than six foot deep, they were hungry. They were ready to eat. So if you can make the right cast and present that bait to them, you got a lot of good fish to bite that way. Oh, there's one up high. That's a big one. Yeah, they're always big when you get them like that. Um, my biggest fish, my two biggest fish on day two came doing that. And then, uh, you know, I caught several fish on it. I'm sorry, day one, my two biggest fish came doing that. And on day two, I caught more fish doing that as well. Um, and as I mentioned, I did catch some fish throwing a Gene LaRue Biffle bugs. set up I like throwing that on a big 7.6 medium heavy or heavy action rod this is a medium heavy rod uh, this is the 716's head that's a sooner run color literally just throwing that down there with 17 pound line series one kiss the reel uh, this is a z-bone uh, very awesome rod uh, but literally I'm just finding 45 degree pea gravel banks something those fish are pulling up onto to stage to spawn they're warming up uh, it was typically protected from a lot of wind had a the sun was heating it they liked it that's why they were up there uh and when they're doing that and you got a place that has some crawdads they're living in it trust that biffle bug you know gravel is a perfect place to throw this you can throw it in some rock too you want smaller rock to keep it from getting hung up but gravel is a great place to drag that bug it looks just like a crawfish retreating down the bank and if a bass sees that if you've ever watched a bass see a crawdad they eat it fast so anyway that biffle bug was another uh, good option that I had in my in my uh, arsenal. I mean, I, I really kept it simple, guys. Uh, it had to be clean water. The water had to be clean. We had a lot of wind that kind of mur uh, kind of murkied up the water. So for what I was doing, uh, smallmouth are very visual feeders. I wanted them to be able to see it really well. And I had some really good areas that were kind of stained up, just a little. Like it wasn't horrible, but it did seem to affect that bite. I had to run around until I found the areas that I liked that had clean water as well. The bait was still there. All that had to be, uh, that combination of all those factors led to a lot of bites. Um, so anyway, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, again, this is early April here on Cherokee Lake in Morristown, Tennessee. If you ever get a chance to be down here in the, in the spring months, uh, it is epic fishing. Uh, really last time we were here, the spawn, all those fish moved up to the bank to spawn and they were nowhere near deep rock. I mean, you needed to be in shallow water um, you could catch them throwing swim baits, throwing Ned rigs, cranking. You could do anything you wanted to. Jerk baits, they were just aggressively guarding their bed. So uh, just stay around rocky areas and they would spawn in between the rocks. Um, but some of those clay banks and pea gravel banks had them on there too. They just get everywhere around here. So get yourself down here around March, April, uh, probably a little bit into May and have you a great time. Uh, but I hope this guys, I hope this helps you guys and uh, click like, click subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think, any questions you have, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. See you guys in the next one.